First, we're gonna grind the catalyst sample. We put about a 5200 milligram sample into mortar and pestle, and we grind it for three to five minutes. Uh, we grind this one a little bit longer than usual because we wanna get a fine catalyst powder. So now we're gonna prepare for the dye. So basically we're gonna put a, a piece of mica on the bottom of the dye by taping that on the edge of the mica. After that, we're gonna flip it over so that the sample can sit on the mica, not the bottom of the base. So now we're gonna put the sample in the dye. So the way we do that, is it's just by slowly pouring the catalyst into the dye. It is extremely important that the powder is uniformly spread over on the mica surface because once the step is completed, it is difficult to change the uniformity of the sample. Uniform spreading can be achieved by spinning the dye while gradually adding sample. The spin motion should act to spread the powder evenly over the mica. During the step, check frequently inside the dye to make sure the sample cover the whole area of the mica without leaving any empty space on it. As you can see, we're pouring the catalyst slowly in the center of the mica and we will further distribute more evenly afterwards. As you can see, after pouring the catalyst, the center is well covered. However, the edge looks non-uniform. We need to smooth that out. By typing the side of the die with the plunger, we create a small vibration to help the sample distribute well. By the end of the step, the sample should look like a single piece distributed uniformly and without any discrete lines in it. To make sure the sample is uniform, you can lift the die up and look through the mica to make sure there's no light come through your sample. We're going to put another piece of mica on top of the sample. In this process, make sure the mica does not change the uniformity of the sample. Insert the plunger slowly and carefully into the die until it rests on top of the mica. The plunger is a pretty tight fit. If you move it too fast, the air rushed out will blow the sample powder around. After finish all that, transfer the die along with the base and the plunger to a die press. Apply pressure and hold for a desired time. We found that 10,000 PSI for 30 minutes produce a good quality sample pellets. For different samples, you may need to change the pressure and time to get the best pellet. After removing the dye from the press, we put a piece of tape over the plunger to make sure the plunger does not move when the dye is turned upside down. Turn the dye upside down. Remove the mica at the bottom of the die by carefully removing the tape. Carefully push the plunger to elevate the sample pellet out of the die. Remove the sample pellet with the mica carefully from the die by pushing the mica with a spatula onto a piece of weighing paper. Separate the sample pellet from the mica with the spatula and remove the mica from the weighing paper. After this, we just weigh the sample pellet along with the weighing paper. 
place the sample pellet into the recessed area of the sample holder A. The recess should be able to hold the entire pellet. After putting sample in the sample holder A, we measure the weight of weighing paper to obtain the weight of the sample pellet. Place sample holder B on top of sample pellet with the thermocouple indent of both sample holders aligned. After the thermocouple indent aligned, we lift up the IR cell to make sure the sample holders are in place. After we lift the, the IR cell, we gently use the tweezer tap around the sample holder to make sure that's in place. Place the sample holder retainer ring carefully on top of the sample holders without cracking the sample pellet. Before we put the calcium fluoride window in the IR cell, we put the window with the graph ferrule together to make sure the ferrule fits the window. Place the calcium fluoride window in the center of the IR cell and on top of the sample holders. Place the graphite ferrule around the calcium flower window and push it up against the sample holder return ring with the ferro backer. To keep everything aligned, first we make sure all screws are finger tight. Next, we use Allen wrench to tighten the eight screws sequentially. We suggest to tighten the opposite screws a quarter turn at each time until the ferro backer sit snugly. After each round of tightening, you should wait for the graphite to relax before the next round of tightening. Repeat the same steps for the other side of the IR cell. In this case, we use a silver plate screws to avoid the need to use anti seat agent. Place the window retainer on top of the calcium fluoride window with just enough pressure to hold the window in place. After the cell is assembled, we put the cell in the heating block in the IR chamber. The IR beam travels from the right to the left. After we make the connections, we install the two beam covers. The beam covers are purged using Boston Uni Air to provide an IR background free of moisture and CO2. Now that everything is installed, the equipment is ready to start experiments.